And so then we'll move from that, from symbolism, into the Nietzsche stuff. And we're looking at the best books out of Thurstra, one of his books, Nietzsche. And we're going to be looking at prologue one, two, three. I'm not sure how many pieces of the prologue we'll get through. Right now I've got three planned, because I really want to do prologue three. But I don't know how it's going to go. Some people are telling me I'm crazy to try to teach Nietzsche. They're probably right, but we're going to try anyway. So if it goes well, we'll progress to part two, and if that goes okay, we'll go to part three. And regardless of how that goes, we'll move on to something else after that. We won't do the whole thing. And they're relatively short. So we're starting off by looking at, at symbolism. Yeah, symbolism. What is symbolism? Please don't read the page right there and say, use some symbols in... The use of... Yeah, tell me what is symbolism. So like an object or something that, that, that represents something else. So something that represents something else. And what it represents largely is going to be like a set of ideas here. So we'll have a, diff a few different forms of, of symbolism here. We'll have object symbolism, which means that we have like an, an object that represents something else. Um, we'll have actions, action symbolism. In other words, when we perform some kind of an action, we're doing a thing that represents something else. So, for example, um, any of you are that person who, maybe some of you are that person who, like, when someone, you want to make sure someone's eating. So you're like, oh, have you eaten? Have you eaten? You want, you want to make sure you feed people? Why, why do you want to feed people? I'm not saying any of you are that person. Well, why would a person want to feed some other people or want to make sure that people are fed? Because it satisfies you. It satisfies them in some way, but it satisfies them because of what it represents. It represents more than just, here's some food. It represents a deep level of caring at, at, at an almost nurturing level. We'll, we'll see more about that. And then we also have speech as well. In other words, things that, that we say. So we'll call them statements, symbolic statements. And these are things that we'll say that actually represent something else. So we're looking at these three things. Symbolic objects, symbolic action, and symbolic statements. In terms of symbolic um, objects, um, when you guys come in during third, fourth, or whatever, and we do the, the flag salute, and we say, I pledge allegiance to this flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, you're not pledging allegiance to that specific piece of cloth in your fourth period math class, let's say. It isn't, you know, I, I, this, one, this one flag right here. This, my, my flag here can beat up your flag from your third grade class. It represents something. Now, obviously, what does that object represent? America. America. So, that, so in a general sense, we're going to say it represents America. So we're saying that we pledge allegiance to the flag. Essentially, we pledge allegiance to the United States. America here, we'll use for the United States. Now, Obvious. I'll suggest to you that symbolism happens at multiple levels. So this is the obvious one. This is the one that most of us understand, that most of us get without digging deeper. Now here's a question. For the people who live in America, what does, it, what does America represent or symbolize? Freedom. Freedom. So now we've got a, a deeper level here. So we might say freedom. What else? Democracy. Democracy. And essentially, these are ideals, or ideas. I'll put both ideas and ideals up here. So it represents both of these things. So when we say that we pledge allegiance to the flag, what we're saying deeply is we pledge allegiance to these ideas, these ideals of freedom and democracy, and all of that, wherever it is. If we find it someplace else, then we, you know, we pledge allegiance to that. So yeah, this is true. It's a flag. It's an object. Yes, it's true, it's to a country, but then countries stand for ideas and ideals. So whatever country that is, whatever the ideals, and because there are different ideas and ideals of each country, that's the thing to which most of us will be pledging our allegiance, those kinds of things. Does this make sense so far? Okay. Now, why do we use symbols? Why symbolism? Why don't we just say things very directly, very straightforwardly? Because a lot can be said with symbols cross-culturally that we couldn't normally say with just words. So like you were saying before, um, earlier, um, in, uh, what did you say, Bulgaria? Uh, Bolivia. Bolivia, 
Mexico, sorry, in Bolivia. You know, we had an example there that there's, there's a word that means different things to different cultures. Um, if we're trying to translate something into English, you know, like, like I was saying earlier, you know, I used the word gabon. How do you how do you translate that into English? What does it mean? Something like that. It's difficult. You know, it doesn't mean exactly, there's no exact translation. It's more of a, an idea. So you're trying to translate or interpret the idea and put it into a different language. It gets really, really messy. But if we're using symbolism, we find that there are ways of communicating cross culturally, across epochs, even across continents, across time, across everything that seem to continue to speak to us. And there are symbols that are so deeply embedded in our psyches that we don't even have to say it. We don't, have to, we, don't have to, we don't even have to explain it. It's built into the things that we're saying. So for example, um, if I were to say to you, um, oh, like, like I mentioned before, I knew a guy named Keith. We used to call Keith the lake. You know, we say, oh, well, what's he like? Oh, he's like a lake. What's a lake like? Well, if, if I say someone's a lake, I'm saying that they're calm. What else? Uh, linear stream. Linear stream, yeah. Kind of straightforward. Yeah, straightforward, peaceful. Yeah, I don't even have to tell you that. If I just said to you, he's like a lake, you'd go, ah, oh, I get it. Yeah. And so these are symbols. Now, going back to Jung, Jung is going to say that there are these symbols that, that enter into us through the, through the collective unconscious that we have access to and, and all that. Um, where it is that you think that this understanding comes from is, is, is not super important. But the idea is just that we understand the idea that symbols can, can communicate deep ideas and deep truths and things like that without us ever having to actually say the words of what that thing is. Does this make sense? Similarly, if I said somebody was a snake, you'd have a certain idea in your head, and so, and, and so forth. Okay. So, questions about this so far? Easy. All right. So then, take a look at the paper that I have in front of you. There, symbolism, articulating what each of the following things symbolize. So the first thing we're looking at here is going to be the objects, some object symbolism. So we have a series of objects listed there. We have a rose, a book, a serpent, a lake, the color red, a dog, and so forth. So I have one example on the screen there, a rose. Now what does a rose symbolize? Yeah, romance, romantic love, romance, devotion. And, of course, we can be more specific by referring to a red rose versus a yellow rose, and so forth. So in this case here, we have a rose that represents romantic love, devotion. You wouldn't even have to tell a person. You walk up to a person and just give them a rose, a red rose, and you know what that person's saying to you. How about a book, though? Like a book? Knowledge. Knowledge. Okay. Okay. Intelligence, yeah. So if you see a person who's carrying a book around, you would think that they have knowledge. You would think that they have intelligence. Smart. Yeah. So they have some smarts that are there. It's just built into the idea of a book. And if you see people who have a bunch of books at their house, what does that suggest about that person or about those people? They like reading. They like reading, and so therefore what? They have a lot of knowledge. A lot of knowledge. What else? Very intelligent. Intelligent, true. What we have up there already. What else? Kind of vocabulary. Strong vocabularies, deep vocabularies. It tells us something about their knowledge, about, about their cultural, you know? So it tells us quite a bit about, about people. Make sense? Okay. So what you're going to do is go through and you're going to well, fill in these here. We have a serpent, a lake, the color red, a dog. I'll give you a minute or so to fill those in and explain what those things symbolize. Okay. 